What's up, y'all? Today we're working on the Dakota. Um, seen in the last video, I unboxed an aluminum diff cover. Sorry, the freaking lights happen. So happens to be on that side. But, um, so this is a stock diff cover. As you see, it's leaking. Um, I did do a uh, service on it not too long ago. And, um, I just used a regular gasket, and I think that's why. I think these came are a little loose. Um, so yeah, that's the main thing. I'm, I'm changing the whole diff cover. Now I'm went with, going with the aluminum one because mainly because it looks nicer. But also add a little bit of cooling, even though this isn't that hot. Even though I just been just drove like, I want to say about 10 miles. So yeah. As you see, it's got the little plastic cover right here that's leaking. This is probably where most of my leaks are coming from, honestly, is this little plug. Uh, think about it. I think the gasket itself, itself is fine. But yeah, so this is going to go. And I'm going to put not, that nice aluminum one on here. Now, all along the side are a set of 13mm uh, bolts. So I'm going to pop these loose. And what you want to do, you want to loosen them all up from the bottom to the top. But leave this top bolt in about halfway. That way, when you pull the cover off, um, there's a nice control uh, pour. And I got my catch can underneath to catch it. Yeah, it's dirty, but I'm not saving this fluid. Even though this fluid, depending on how much is left in here, isn't that old. But, um, yeah, so. You got 10 bolts right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and start popping them loose. And I'll get you when it's uh, when I got the cover off and get ready to clean off this uh, the mating service for the on the axle itself. Uh, just a little background information on this axle: it is a Mopar uh, eight and a quarter ten bolt uh, rear end. Uh, it's fairly standard axle. It's a uh, size up from the seven and three quarters. I think it's, it's the size. But it's not as big as the nine and a quarter, which is like the big, the big puppy version of this, uh, the real strong one. This one's about medium strength. Uh, I think you, this one's good up to like 400 horsepower, maybe a little bit more or less. I don't know. Uh, actually, probably a little bit more than that. Uh, now that I'm thinking about it, but um, yeah. So this is uh, this has a 355 gear, as in 3.55 turns of the. Uh, the input shaft is one turn of the wheel so and it's a limited slip or, or, yeah so um both front both rear wheels spin in the same direction except for when you're taking a the turn then one wheel will unlock uh this is, is a clutch type and you might be able to see some of that when i pull the cover off and in there and it is rebuildable these are rebuildable you can replace the clutches and springs and a couple other things, which I'm not going to do in this app, in this uh, video. Might do it later. I don't know. Kind of wanting to go upgrade to a nine and a, nine and a, a quarter with disc brakes. That way, I'll have the real big, the uh, real good axle with uh, real good brakes. But uh, let me go ahead and get this cover off because I'm done rambling. And I'm kind of fighting this light. I only have. Maybe like an hour of light left. So see y'all in just a sec. Alright, so I got all the bolt bolts out. Except for the top one. This one's loose. They're about taking about halfway. It's starting to drip. So now, I'm just going to take it. Make sure this is positioned well. And grab it at the edge and just kind of pull on it a little bit. Whoops. Missed a little bit. And as you see... This diff fluid is relatively new and clean, but I'm glad I actually have diff fluid in there, honestly. So, yeah, that's basically it. It's basically done draining, so now I'm just going to take this bolt all the rest of the way out. Like so. Now, one thing I am a little concerned about that I didn't think of is that, um... this uh, mount for the brake line. I don't know if the diff cover has a, a way for me to secure that because as far as I know I think the screws are re the bolts are recessed into the diff cover. So this might be 
a little loose on here. But fortunately, this looks like it's covered pretty well, so I'm not really going to worry about it too much. I'm just going to gently pull this off and I'm good. It's not that dirty. So yeah, there it is. Right here is a Mopar 8 and 3 quarter 355 gear set in here. You got the bearing caps right here. You got the adjusters right here that adjust the preload on the bearings. You got the tone ring for the ABS, which I want to figure out how to make this work with the speedometer. Not really worried about ABS on this truck because, you know, it's ABS with the rear brakes, and the rear brakes don't normally lock up like that. Right here are the spider gears. You got the side gears right here, and the pinion shaft gears right here is the pinion shaft, and on the other side there's a nut. And uh, on the other side is a set of springs. Inside here are a set of clutches. And right back in there is the pinion bear, the pinion uh, input shaft. And right here's the ring gear. You want to kind of, I wish I had this truck up in the air, but I didn't, don't. So it's nice and level when I fill it. You want to make sure these gears are nice and uh, clean and nice, not chewed up or any way. These looks real good. So, I'm happy about that. Uh, the surface looks nice and good. I'm just going to wipe it off with a little bit of paper towel. And um, that's probably about it. It's, it's not that dirty, so I'm not going to worry about cleaning up, cleaning it up too much. So, yeah. I'm going to let this finish dripping out. This is the inner cover some nastiness on there but not too nothing too crazy uh, there's always gonna be a little bit of uh, metal in here what you want to worry about is any big shaving any big chunks and I'm not seeing that just little tiny shavings uh, and this gasket actually came out pretty clean too so theoretically I could reuse this gasket but I'm not doing that I'm gonna use uh, the, that quick setting RTV stuff I believe it's called the right stuff whatnot that way I could pretty much Put it on, wait, wait like a minute or two, stick it on there, run the bolts snug, let it sit for like another two minutes, then run, torque it down as best as I can. Um, then fill it up with the fluid. But uh, right now, as of right now, it's pretty good. Um, so, I'll see you in a bit once this is done dripping now, and I get this wiped down with a little bit of paper towels, and I get the bolts prepped up. Anyway, um, see you on just a sec. Alrighty, so I got the differential cover out. Um, it does come with RTV, but this is uh, the long setting stuff. And I don't feel like waiting a whole day to get this truck back on the road. So, I got the, this stuff called the right, the right stuff. Uh, it's pretty much instant uh, cure stuff. I mean, it says it's uh, ready to return to service in like a minute. Um, basically with this, I'm going to put a bead around on the inside of these bolts, maybe like a semi-circle like that and go down, so come over like this, a little semi-circle like that, all around the whole thing. Uh, OEM is sealed with RTV, so this is technically the correct way to do. The gasket is technically the incorrect way. I did this because I didn't feel like dealing with the RTV, but it, I have a leak, kind of think it's coming from the cap though, but uh, might as well nip it in the bud while I have the chance. So um, yeah, I might actually have a little more uh, fluid volume with this uh, cover too, it looks like, but um, that's 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 all uh, out the thought. What I'm going to do. These are the new bolts I'm going to use. Uh, they came with the cover. I'm going to put a little bit of a um, dry locker on here. Uh, the blue stuff. That way I know I don't have to worry about this thing coming loose. I'm going to do that before I put the RTV on. Since this is the quick setting stuff. I want to make sure I'm able to get it on the uh, axle in time. Before this stuff uh, becomes too uh, rubbery. Because uh, Apparently this stuff is good to return to service in like a minute, even though I think it takes up to like two hours for it to fully cure. But at least I know I'll be able to get this on there, torque tighten down, and pretty much 
filled up before. Well, filled up right in time. This stuff, it comes hard enough to do all that. Uh, I'm down here. Like I said, I'm just using the regular blue medium strength thread locker. Uh, that way, it still requires... That way I don't have to worry about it coming off. I don't think it will, but I want to make sure it doesn't. Uh, these screws are uh, 6 mil uh, Allen. Uh, T40 seems to work too. But I got a 6 mil Allen wrench right here, so this is what I'm going to use to tighten it up. Probably not the best way, because um, there's no good way to torque it down. I don't have a uh, 6... Oh, I might... Hold on. I might have one in here. I think this is a uh, 6 mil right here. Okay, so... Eh. I don't... The torque for this, I think, is like 20 foot-pounds. Uh, I don't have a real good way to torque it. Yes, I do have a 6 mil uh, thing right here, but I have no way to get it on my torque wrench, which is a half-inch drive. I don't have the adapter for it. Or at least I don't have it handy. So, um, I'm just going to snug it down, give it... Yeah, probably like a whole full turn past uh, hand tight or something like that. That should be good enough. I'm um, just basically just going by fuel. It is a this is aluminum, so I got to make sure I don't mar this out. And so anyway, let me go ahead and get these all uh, prepped up. Then I'll go ahead and put the RTV on this. Um, then I'll meet you underneath the truck when I get ready to put it on. All right, so see y'all in just a second. Alright, so I got the bead laid down. I got to be quick about this. Uh, I just got holding it upside down. Uh, that's all dried off. These all good to go. So I'm literally just going to pop it on there real quick. I'm not going to be able to film it because I need to both hands. So uh, I'll see you in just a second. Alright, so I got it all pretty much torqued down. I got it about as tight as I can get with uh, this thing. And basically the torque sequence is up, down, uh, this one. Uh, and this one, to this one, to this one, to this one, you know, etc. You go in a star pattern, and you tighten it down like this. It's technically like 20 foot pounds or something like that. Um, I was able to get the brake, brake line put back on, no problem. But the little tags, uh, little service tags, the one, you know, the stuff that like identify the axle, what type of oil to use, and uh, what kind of gear sets in here. I wasn't able to reuse because um, the nut bolts, whatever you want to call them, will just like haul the way through them. So I'd uh, forget those. And um, on this axle, uh, on this differential cover, it's, uh, the bolt that was up top is the fill bolt. This is an inspection hole, which technically you can still fill up, fill up through, but uh, this. You pull this off, put the fluid in, until it starts dripping out here, and that's it. And of course this is a drain plug. Um, this was loose when I uh, went to take it off, so I went around and checked this one. Um, I believe it's like a 7mm uh, Allen wrench or something like that. I don't have a 7, so I used a torque, torque uh, bit, which I believe was a T45, T50, something like that. So this is uh, nice and tight. This was relatively tight. I just gave it that extra oomph just to make sure because uh, I don't want to put this in and all put the oil in and all just drains out. Speaking of the oil, this is that's what it's about ready for. And um, this is what I'm using, uh, just Castrol Limited Slip 80W90. I believe the fluid you're supposed to use in here is 7590. Uh, they didn't have 7590 in stock. This is the next. Pretty much relatively the same, it's just a little thicker when it's cold. I live in Florida. Uh, I believe the coldest it gets here is maybe like 28 degrees for like a day. So I'm not really worried about that at all. Uh, it's got the limited slip additives for the clutch packs in here. Theoretically, with the clutch type, you're supposed to put like a, a friction modifier, which is like this little gel stuff that you pull like half the gear roll in and you pour that into the gear roll and put the rest of it in there um they didn't have that either uh since this is pretty worn out anyway uh, i'm not going to worry worry about it 
Uh, the aluminum slip additives in this should be fine. Castro is a decent brand. I'm not worried about it. Um, I would normally use a pump, and that's what I was intending on doing it, but I can't find the lower straw that goes inside the bottle. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. But uh, I do have enough room on top to just pour, to pour it into the axle. So that's basically what I'm doing. I already cut the top off of this one. Um, I have two quarts. I believe it only takes like a quart and a half. So I only cut the top off of one of them. I still got to open up the the seal on it, but that's this is what you want to do. You only want to cut the top off of one of them. That way, say I only use like half of this, I can use the seal cap and put it back on to the half bottle. That way, it's all sealed up and I don't have to worry about lose worry about it leaking all over the place. So anyway, let me go ahead and uh, pierce the top. And um, I'll be right back. I have trouble opening. All right, so this is the second quart. I already got the first quart in there. It's taking a little bit long time because you know this gear oil is thicker, and there's no real good way for it to um, vent itself. I guess I'm um, just kind of. Um, on the other bottle, I poked a hole in it, but like I said, I think this is only going to take a little bit more than just half. A little bit. It's only going to take a little bit of this. I'm going to have a little bit left over. And I don't want to poke a hole in the container and waste like half of my oil. Anyway, I'm just waiting for it to start dripping out of here. Then once that happens, I'll put the inspection cover back, back on. And that's basically it. Of course, this stupid phone does not. There we go. Let's say this stupid phone does not want to focus on it. Anyway, I'm going to squeeze in a little bit. Not to force. I'll speed it up a little bit. So far, I'm not seeing no leaks come from, you know, right here on the bottom. So, that's good. The only leaks I'm seeing is coming from right here at the nozzle of the oil but I'm not really worried about that either so yeah um, I'm gonna get back to you when it's uh, full or um, once I'm out of this oil I don't know my could have uh, so much bought myself shy but you know I could always top it off at work because I work at a uh, Vaveline so I'll go stop it off over there. Anyway, um, yeah, let me uh, get back to you when it's all finished up, and hopefully it'll be dripping out, and that way I can kind of show you. So, so, like I said, I think with this a diff cover too. Oh, there we go, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. It's uh, dripping right there, so I'm gonna pull this out. And I'm going to take this inspection cover and seal it off. Let me try to seal it off. There we go. Probably helpful I go the right direction. Winning, folks. Right, tell you, lefty, Lucy. Uh, so, yeah. This diff cover is filled. Now with this, that should be all you should have to do to it. Then the fill plug, that goes up here. Up here, like so. This is a uh, 13 mil right here. And just snug it up, and that's it. This uh, diff cover is officially done. Just give it a 
quick wipe with the paper towel. Let's see if I can get some of my fingerprints off of it. And that's it. So, yeah, that's it. Um, Y'all know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on my Instagram. Uh, username being in the, in the description. Um, be safe, have fun, and don't forget to tip your waitress.